you can't overdiagnose something when people do know themselves best. Yeah, you're going to get chances, just like you get chances in Parliament who go and take the massive wages, vote in new wages for themselves. <laughs> OK. And the man behind the blue shirt. Yeah. Roasted. I like this guy, yeah. People in the UK are waiting to access chronically underfunded mental health support. Should this be an urgent priority? So uh, you said a million, I think it's a quarter it's a, of them. No, it's a million, Fiona. It's a million. A quarter of them will wait two years or longer for that support. Yeah. yeah. Well, nearly a million were, are referred to child and adolescent mental health services. That's the latest figures uh, for 22 23. A quarter Oops. of them are still waiting for treatment. I think. Get ready for the Tories to pretend to care about mental health for five minutes. I mean, wasn't that's, somebody, that's... wasn't it Mel Stride, who was in, he's the head of the DWP at the moment. Mm. So, like, IDS Mark II. Yep. He was even saying that there's too much focus on mental health care at the moment. And I'm just like, you f***ing shitting me. Are you having a laugh? Are you having an absolute laugh, mate? Given, yeah. I mean, it's worth pointing out as well that we shouldn't have to spend all this money on mental health. We shouldn't have to spend all this money on mental health care. Because what we are doing is yet again mopping up a problem created by the fact that we've not invested. This is a problem with the fact that we took money out of our communities because there are no communities. We took money out of state investment because there is no state investment, there's no room for the state. And we took all of these amenities that are necessary to have a community within local authorities, forced them to sell them off for budget cuts because there's no money to give to local authorities. And what's that left us with? No community, no society, no nothing. And at the time at which they won't do anything about the climate either, so young people at the moment have no community, no job, but they can't get on the housing ladder, the world looks like it's going to burn to crisp because nobody cares about dealing with climate change and the Nazis are back. And you're like, well, why is there so much mental health problems amongst young people? Oh, it's the iPhones. It's the iPhones. I think it's that, but why... You... Yeah, why are they turning to communism? Yeah, exactly. Why? why, why I can't believe, we, I can't believe we just created this gigantic cohort of radically left-wing millennials. I'm just like, well, of course you did. The 2008 financial crash happened where bankers, wanker bankers, destroyed our economy with the help, of course, with deregulation and the combined united front of blue Tory and red Tory of the mm. entirety of the post Thatcher period of deregulation. And what did we do? Did we punish the bankers? No, we bailed them out. We bailed out the bankers. Yep. And then what did that leave us with? Six years, eight years even of conservative austerity under Osborne, Cameron, Hammond and May, where the solution to all the money spent on bailing out the banks was taking a money away from those communities that now have been completely decimated. And you wonder why young people hate the Tories, they hate capitalism, because the capitalists and the Tories, and of course the red Tories, are the ones who have just left us in the place that they're in. And of course, with no hope, of course they're miserable. Why do you think they're miserable? It makes no Again, just, it all comes down to material conditions at the end of the day. But of course they'll all say right, the problem is social oh, media and iPhones. Jesus. Yeah. That's Karl Marx, by the way, not just a random person called Karl. <laughs> <laughs> those, are the, those are the facts. Should this be an urgent priority, Philippa? Yes, of course. I mean, if we don't look after our young people's mental health, then what future do they have and what future do we as a country have? Was the suggestion that there was some sort of weak-spirited malingering going on, which is... You know, he was saying that young people were self-diagnosing with uh, mental health issues. Of well, course, not just young people, people young generally. People. He were, he's... And it's funny that the people who would say that are absolute f psychopaths. Yeah, like, like, they're, really they're all right to call all the people mentally ill, you know? Okay. Yeah, all of the, like, the right-wing boomers who have just kind of become narcissistic idiots in their role, in their twilight years, these mm. are the ones who really need the therapy. But, if, A, they can afford their own therapy because they're all minted. Mm. And second of all, I'm like, well, maybe, right? Maybe you got what you wanted. Rovak makes a good point. Instead of investing in mental health, have we thought about clapping for mental health uh, patients? Specialised, his concentration was that there was this new sort of spirit of young people failing to get up, feeling bluesy was the word. Well, he, he what he said was an increase, there an in, there's been an increase in conversations on mental health which has led to people effectively self diagnosing conditions. I'm grateful for today's much more open approach to mental health, he said, but there's a danger this has gone too far. The reason people are self diagnosing is because they can't get an appointment. I wonder why people don't want to vote for these obviously evil bastards. 
It's a mis- it's an absolute mystery, isn't it? It's a mystery that in like under thirty fives, like ten percent of them gonna vote for the Conservative Party. Like Which, to be fair, not far off of the rest of the country now at this point. But well, exactly, they, they were yeah. already like this before all of the mess happened. Exactly. Like literally they in an election year, there seemed to be in every department going out of their way to say, Look how far evil we are. Look, we're actively making the country worse and laughing in your face while we do it. And worse than that, I think this is absolutely part of what we've seen happen before when Ian Duncan Smith retired from the Conservatives because they were trying to uh, limit benefits to people with disability. And what we've got now is, I think, the suggestion that people who are mentally unwell are, in fact, not really that mentally unwell and that they should be out at work. And clearly... I mean, he talks about people having seven minutes with the doctor and getting a sick note and that giving them a guaranteed pension for life. This is madness. I should just get into industries like being an MP where you can just not turn up and that's fine. True. Yeah. Or in Nigel Farage's case, an MEP. Yeah, you don't need a sick note when you can just not bother. He needs to go into a job centre and talk to the people who spend their lives trying to get people into work, trying to get reasonable adjustments, yeah. trying to help people who desperately want to work, who desperately want a healthy life, who desperately want a future and some way of earning money, but are literally too unwell at the moment to do so. And we said when, when we went through COVID, we all said to each other in the spirit of post-COVID sympathy, there is going to be a lot of trouble with people who have spent so long in isolation and whose links with their community and their work have broken down. We're going to find it very hard with young people who haven't gone through the usual education process, with the kids who didn't do nursery, with the socialisation of the very, very young, with the apprentices who couldn't get in and have a mentor that they met every day and talked to. And we knew there would be this problem. Now there is this problem. And what, what we're saying is that it's not a problem at all. It's just another spring in June. Rod? Mm. Uh, I think there probably is some overdiagnosis, if I'm honest. Uh, and I, I have some sympathy... Oh, yeah, man who punches people in the face is going to lecture everyone about mental health. Uh ...sympathy with what Mel Stride said, but I think basically... We do have a problem in this country with mental health. Uh, it's not particularly something associated with, with poverty. It's something associated with anime and alienation. And we've become a far, far less communal country over you know, the last you put 50, it in, 60 in years. A few years ago, Ron, it was not quite that. You said... Yeah, literally, we had the Prime Minister, who is the behemoth that strides all modern politics in Britain, who literally said there's no such thing as society. And she made okay. it come to fear. She did indeed, in the words of herself as well, you know, the method is economics, the goal is to change the soul. And she turned our country and she bastardised the soul of this great nation into a bunch of grasping, greedy, selfish simpletons. But she did also say, oh no, I'm dying. And That's then... also true, she did do that. And it was good, and it was great that she said that, actually. Honestly, big she was a big fan great, of that moment. Great, Top great. Match cool. moments. Exactly, yeah. We live in a perpetual tizzy about our nation's mental health, <laughs> largely as a consequence, I suspect, of us all being too affluent and comfortable well, and there's not a, having enough you, other stuff yeah. to worry about. OK, if you want, want me to address that rather than the question, I'll do that. Well, no, it's, uh, it's obviously... It's just you saying you think it's, it's, it's uh, the issues about anime and other matters. Well, I'm just saying this is about anime. This is... Do you know what country has the worst mental health in the world? Monaco, the richest country in the world. And if you go down... Well, we need, it needs to be liberated, then. I'm That's sure that fun. every I'm, I'm sure that every single part of the Monaco you know, population are experiencing exactly the same kind of mental distress that you get in the UK. I'm sure there's also, there's a lot of parallels between yeah. the city state of Monaco and the entirety of Great Britain, especially also, considering that we are as a country outside of London are as poor as Mississippi. Oh, come on, yeah. Rod. The list you will see that. The, the, the countries with the worst mental health, i.e. the most referrals, the most therapists, the most psychiatrists, who, who are people who see psychiatrists, per capita, Monaco, Netherlands, Norway, uh, Belgium, uh, we're in the list as well, but a bit... Yeah, places that can afford to go to a therapist, yes, we know. The people of Rwanda probably can't. doesn't mean they're not mentally ill, it just means they don't have the resources available further down so it's it's affluence so the, the, there is a link between affluence and and uh, and and the kind of uh, introspection which comes about no it's that they can use the affluence to acquire the resources i.e going to a therapist Look, talk about putting the cart before the horse. What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm like, of course, and the thing is, the thing is, by his own logic, right? If he's saying, well, there's this 
kind of correlation between affluence and poor mental health then why are we having all of the people having the mental health problems in this country young people like this epidemic of young people with mental health problems the least affluent part of the entire nation yet a, like a quarter of pensioners and millionaires where's their mental health crisis come on rod it's about opportunity and you, you was right to say about you know loss of community and loss of you know, a future those are the actual correct answer to these things because that's what millennials and zoomers don't have the boomers do have at time of recording as a consequence and it's an introspection which i think comes comes about because we are a less communal nation than we've been before many of our hubs the local hubs where we all gather together such as pubs such as churches are closed down we don't meet each other anymore we're far more transient that the, these are the sorts of things which give us which give us a sense of goodwill and of self uh, of self confidence and i think we've lost that uh, and i think that's a real real he's almost doing a marx here about you know uh, the uh, the soul of a soulless world and all of that real problem and something which mel stride didn't mention in his comments so i work as a mental health team manager and one of the issues that we see day after day actually is having enough staff to be able to drive those waiting times down what are you doing to actually recruit and retain the staff that we've got at the moment and to support the burnt out nurses that are leaving the NHS in droves so that we can keep the NHS going and actually have any waiting list for anybody to access care at all. Okay. Turns well, out, sticking right? with mental health just for a minute if you'll forgive me. Turns out, I hate to break it again chat, yet again letting the cat out of the bag. The answer was to spend more money. <laughs> it's really weird how that keeps cropping up as being a problem. It's a, yeah, there's like, a, there's like a pattern emerging here. Hmm. There's like a picture beginning to come out of the mist here about what you know the core of the problem but you know there's no magic money tree so oh what's that another crash on wall street or whatever yeah no there's a magic money tree for five minutes oh, well, what's some that? Planes, off, planes off to rwanda kev because because that was a question would you like to answer that yeah oh. uh, absolutely so i think there's two things here um first of all we are investing in mental health services i think the figure is something like 2.3 billion pounds across the whole system um okay so I'm it's telling not you, enough I'm, you don't see you, I'm just because you haven't got a microphone. There. Obviously, I'm telling you what, what is being put in. You're telling me what you know yeah. because it's your job. Yeah. But I mean, I'm there every day. I think she probably knows better. Well, I'm when we get to Labour's plan of how you're going to fund the mental health services, and I'm sure we, we'll hear from you, but I want to tell you that the government is taking this seriously. That's why it's putting in £2.3 billion of taxpayers' money. But I think that doesn't obscure from the fact that there's a central truth in what Mel Stride said which I do agree with. So while we have to be very... Oh, I, no, I am evil, though. Even though we are helping, honest, I am also evil. Well, the thing is, is that they can't acknowledge the fact of the mental health epidemic in this country of yeah. young people. They can't acknowledge it as being necessarily answer, true. Because yeah. then they would know that it was their fault. They yeah. would have to then accept the, the crappy country that they have fomented through their decade well, four decades of horrendous policy, horrendous macro policy, horrendous structure of the society that they've created, that young people in this country feel like they have no future. And they would they can't ever recognize that. So there must be something else. We've done all of this good work in trying to create this this prosperous society for them. How dare they throw it back in our faces by being sad about it? Well actually, no, no, it is bad for them. It does suck for young people. It's your fault. Yep. And they're going to hate you for it. And there's nothing that you can do now. Like, you can talk all you want about all this extra funding you're putting into mental health care now. But at the end of the day, you've already fucked it for them. So they're never coming back. Yeah, exactly. You've literally lost an entire, well, two generations now, really. Yeah. And the millennials, of, or the, uh, the Gen X people have turned against you as well. I mean, the boom, literally, you've staked all your claim for electoral success on a generation that's literally dying as we speak. Yep. I don't know that, like, I mean... It's a bold play. We'll see how it works out for you when they're literally gone in five years. Idiots. Sensitive and compassionate about people who are struggling with mental health. We also have to be perfectly honest and recognise that there is some truth in what he said. Mental health is a very difficult thing to diagnose. Um, if you have a system um, which incentives would help if people could get an appointment with a doctor to get that diagnosis right so but again it's just they can't another thing about this policy 
is they can't admit that people who have mental health problems in this country have them genuinely. These are sincere problems that they have, especially when they've been already signed off by a doctor, which in the vast majority of cases they have done, especially if they're the kind of people who are off work because mm. of mental health issues. Because remember, their big drive at the moment in the DWP is to try and get people who are signed off sick back into work, mostly yeah. by stripping away their benefits and their welfare or trying to get them to work some days or work from home because magically working from home makes people who have terrible mental health more likely to be able to work. Work, but you know, this is a whole other story to get into yeah. but they can't acknowledge that all of these are genuine problems otherwise they would essentially have been admitting that they're trying to force people who are unable to work back into work just because of the sake of productive capacity which yeah. is draconian it's very draconian yep. advises people um to say that they have got a mental health condition that is that puts a lot of pressure on the system to is really... Is that not your system? Uh, of course it's our system, but the system was set up with compassion at, ha at the Again, heart of it, right? Again, laugh so at all, it's every week. Have a system that, how do you have a system? You know, you have to be frank about how difficult this is. You know, th th these are things that people spend their lives doing, like the, the lady that, over there, and she's obviously caring for pa patients uh, and people. And, and that While you carry on, the, the Tories get laughed at every week and they try and plod on and it's just pathetic. Especially it's pathetic when someone who is just so unconvincing, like Rachel McLean, yeah, she's, is... she's, not, she's not good at this. She's not good at this. We were, we were reading on stream, I think it might have been yesterday or the day before, the big issue report onto this case where the UN are hearing about the Conservatives' violation of the human rights of the disabled. Mm. And even then, their representatives from the DWP were talking specifically about this idea of, well, look how good we're doing at getting disabled people back into work. Which, of course, is being done in a draconian fashion by taking away people's benefits and going through all of these different assessments or whatever it might be to try and get them back into work. But fundamentally, it's because under this Protestant work ethic, garbage ideology that they operate under, sincerely, I might add, not, it's not being done cynically, it's a sincere belief they have, that it literally is what work sets you free it's yeah. well actually you know the best thing we can do for disabled people is to get them shelf stacking at tesco that's the best thing that we can do for them to make sure that they're a functioning member of society i'm like well, surely it's worth more than that giving her life to that mm. but when you have a system that doesn't distinguish between somebody who's just dealing with life as it is life is hard life is tough it's normal to feel sad it is normal to feel depressed. It's normal to feel... It's normal to feel sad. What the fuck are you talking about? We're talking about people with, like, crippling depression and shit. It's not just a bit of sadness. Again, it's the ghoulishness of them. They can't imagine that there are people who are genuinely suffering. It's just everyone feels a bit sad, but just pull yourself up by your mental bootstraps. Well, again, yeah, it's exactly what I was saying before. Like, if they believed anything else, they'd have to admit that they're at fault. They'd have to paper over with some kind of nonsense story. Her expert analysis on this is, well, actually, it's nothing to do with that. Some people are just sad. That's it. Yeah. Oh, some people are just sad. They could be working, but they're just sad. That's it. There's no, like, broader societal problems at no. play here whatsoever. The doctors are just misdiagnosing people and people and are I just get, sad. And I wonder why, again, young people don't want to vote for this shit. You've been specifically no. asking about a million young people wanting health care, mental health care, and having to wait on waiting lists and not getting anywhere near it. And you'll go, like, well, some people are just fucking sad. They just need to get over it a little. You know, like, it's embarrassing. It's That's your answer. Mm. That's it's their an entire election. answer, yeah. keep wanting to scream at them. It's an election year. What the f*** are you doing? What, what do you think this is going to achieve at the ballot box? You're going to get absolutely f***ed creamed you fools oh yeah they're gonna be gonna be totally obliterated and it's gonna be all self-inflicted it literally all of this is self-inflicted to brexit yeah. to austerity to failing to plan for the pandemic through yeah. to the list trust moment through to every single failing idiot every over promoted failing moron that they have put into the public sphere to be their quote unquote propagandist it's they they, they have just taken a gigantic majority a country that put their trust in them and they've deliberately flushed it away through yeah. sheer incompetence not malice incompetence it's honestly yeah. like they they will get totally annihilated at the ballot box and they fully 100 percent deserve it and sooner rather than later i hope true feel grief it's normal not to feel happy all the time and we can't pretend as a government that we can somehow take away the human condition that we are all familiar no one is saying you can we're not asking for a fuck cure we're saying there are mental health approaches to dealing with mental illness that you will not fund because you're ghouls. 
it's just another look into the conservative psyche. Yeah. Again, it's this no such thing as society rhetoric going on here. She's saying it's essentially this, well, the government isn't the solution. Back to David. Remember when David Cameron says, well, there is such thing as society. It's just not the same thing as the state. What he was meaning is the state can't affect this. And yeah. under a, a neoliberal mindset, you can't even perceive of a situation in which your economic policy, your structure of the way you've built this society, can therefore lead to mental health effects being poor for other people. Again, yeah. otherwise you'd have to impugn yourself for your poor policy planning. But it, their ideology is so <laughs> fixed they yeah. can't even they can't even like register to them that well maybe the problems here are the fault of what you've done in government. Familiar with. And by the I'm way, familiar. I do know what I'm talking about. I actually have got two psychology degrees. I've studied mental health. I understand a lot of the difficulties with diagnosing it but i think we do need to start having the conversation that's what mel stryver is doing he's being honest and grown up about this and i think many people if they look in the mirror will agree with these points okay well let's see let's hear from well some said. of the people here um, um i am one of the people who suffers with mental health issues 11 years ago i was in psychiatric hospital when i came out there was nothing there for me I wasn't ill enough to go into supported living. I wasn't well enough to go back home and live with my mother. And I was just said, they said, well, good luck to you. Now, I'm running a business where I'm dealing with a lot of people who spend a lot of time online. I have gone out and I have found the money to make sure that everybody involved in my business has mental health support. Why can't the government do the same? Okay. And, and if exactly. Well, <laughs> turns out... To give money just, just invest in it no but david cameron was right that man did it all himself so the big society wins he says well i when i came out of this i didn't have anybody who was there to help me with coming out of the the process i didn't have mm. anything to go back to i mean yeah of course you didn't because all of the things got stripped away it got stripped away during the austerity years comments um by the Secretary of State in the Department for Work and, and Pensions was saying there's, there's an element perhaps of overdiagnosis, as, as Rach was saying. Do you have any truck with that? No, it's, it's, there's no, you can't overdiagnose something when people do know themselves best. Yeah, you're going to get chances, just like you get chances in Parliament who go and take the massive wages, vote in new wages <laughs> right. for themselves. OK. And the man behind <laughs> the blue shirt. Yeah. Roasted. I like this guy, yeah. Yeah, big fan That's of this good. guy. No, I, love it. Um, I just want to go back to the comment made earlier, which I think is absolutely ridiculous, saying that poverty has nothing to do with mental health. I'm a medical student. We all are. And we see day in, day out people who have... Given that this is Middlesbrough and that's her accent, I wasn't thinking she was local. I thought she might be a student. Yeah, to be fair. But she's making a good point. A really rubbish situation at the moment because they can't afford food for their kids to put on the table. They've not got a job because there isn't the jobs up here because the Tory government haven't invested money up here. It's ridiculous that you think poverty has nothing to do with mental health. It isn't. It isn't. If you look at the... No, it, no, it is. It's an exacerbating factor. Doesn't yes. Poor people aren't inherently mentally ill and rich people aren't inherently mentally healthy. In fact, my father, when he was clinically depressed as a younger man, attended a, a thing with a very, very rich woman who used to literally pull up to the meetings in a Jaguar. She was phenomenally rich. And he described her as the as the most mentally ill person there. It's not just poverty that can be a super big problem when it comes to mental mm -hmm. health. It's also it's relative poverty. Relative yep. poverty is the big problem that you have here. It's Middlesbrough being destroyed by deindustrialization with no investment and no jobs. You know the kind of dole queues they got in the Thatcher years in. Yep all around northern towns because of the legacy of Thatcherism itself, whilst also having to look at the gaudy crap that is you know, the rich areas of London and the inner cities in this country. Well, that, there is a, there's a broader point as well, and it goes to the alienation thing that we were mentioning earlier. Walking around a society that you know doesn't give a f*** about you is a harmful thing. Mm -hmm. in, in the, I really did have a wise-up moment after the Grenfell Tower incident like i was aware that britain didn't really give two fucks for poor people but i didn't really quite realize the callousness with which british people especially those in the southeast who frankly as far as the media are concerned are the only people who exist treat poor people immigrants people of color whatever uh the, the downtrodden in our society with just such level of callousness there are places in this country where there are no jobs People can't afford to live. Food is difficult to be able to afford. Right? This is a 
this massive disparity between the haves and the have nots is what creates this absolutely this cycle this cycle of poor mental health yeah exactly yeah Figures, it's nothing to do with it at all. I see I'm people sorry, day in, day out who struggle with I their mental health. It, 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 just, it just doesn't correlate. It, uh, you, you know, some of the poorest countries in the world have some of the highest levels of social solidity and, and social together. Yeah, but and also their uh, acquisition of mental health care is diminished by the fact that they can't afford it. I think he's right in saying that some level of social discohesion, some level of like lack of community, and communitarian mm. ideals is going yeah. to cause poor mental health. And I think that's true. I think that's very true. But you've got to remember that there is a patient zero to both relative poverty massively increasing, overall poverty massively increasing, and community massively being decreasing. And that is neoliberalism. That is the patient yeah. zero. Because not only has it created loads of fabulously wealthy people and loads of destitute people as a result, it has also destroyed our communities as well is the young people who are waiting to access underfunded mental health support. Should this be an urgent priority? I'm sure you'll say yes, it should. How would you fund it? Well, what I'd say first is it is I agree with Tim that it is a huge issue and it's an issue in Croydon. People are waiting two years to access a CAMS appointment. And what Labour has said is that one of the solutions is to put more mental health support in schools directly so that you don't have to wait two years. You can get... Okay, but what does that mean? put mental health support in schools. What does that mean? You're going to have dedicated people, actual nurses. Where are you going to find them? How are you going to fund them? Are you going to take them away from the pre-existing mental health clinics? In which case, you're just making the problem potentially worse. Again, it's uh, the, the Tories are right in the attack on Labour that they don't have a plan. Now, the Tories' plan is garbage and won't work, but Labour don't even have a plan. It's also interesting to say, well, how are you going to fund it? Because this will have to come from day-to-day -day spending. So under Rachel Reeves' fiscal rules, they will have to raise taxes to do this. But of course, they have the magic growth button, which will pay for everything. Oh, what's that mental health, kids? Oh, no, the magic money tree didn't come out today. Sorry. Yeah, so the workarounds that Tim talks about that are ha now happening between uh, charities and other agencies trying to find a way to help kids. Actually, if you have mental health provision in schools, you can help kids straight away. Um, and, and there are other things, of course, we need to do. And, and it's absolutely right that social media uh, is difficult. I Not just that. With the, with the breakfast clubs and the brushing your teeth and the mental health, are they going to do any learning at school? Is there going to be any time left in the day for classes? Are they, they going to learn woke school? studies, Kevin? They're going oh. to le learn how to be woke. The, the woke yeah. teacher is going to indoctrinate them into cultural socialism. Yes, transology 101. <laughs> Let's, Let's go. go. I've got three teenage children. I don't let them use their phone, have them in their bedroom at night, um, because I know that many children do, and that, that Would causes Would you ban huge... smartphones from, chi from children under 16? I wouldn't 16? ban smartphones, you no. Should. But, but what about mental health nurses, worry. as the woman is... Hang on, he's literally for banning children having phones is, is that the brianna jay's mom thing isn't it oh well, again literally exactly what i said it they would say at the start of the program i literally yeah. said they're just going to say well, is it all of these societal factors that are causing the absolute you new know, death of the future for these children no mm. it's the iphones it's yeah. too many iphones you know it's the it's the rippity rap music and the video games literally the same yeah. shit it's different year same yeah. shit different decade yep we need more uh, we need a cash injection into our nhs across the board which labor has said we would do but can i just say on mel stride this is a, a typical tory tactic of blaming other yeah. people yeah. for yeah. their own failings when i was younger about when i was 19 i got pregnant and that was the time that the tories were blaming teenage mums for every problem in society they did it then this is 30 years ago they're doing it now we've had 14 years of low growth a, a struggling economy. That's why we haven't got enough okay. money in our public services. We, we would just support just, mental health. Just hang on. Just let, no, let me just... So, sorry, what was your name? Mel. Mel. So Mel uh, works uh, in a mental health practice. Mm -hmm. uh, you want more mental health nurses. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're going to get asked this question time and time again as the election gets closer, uh, because obviously you're doing very well in the polls as well. How are you going to fund more mental health nurses? And when can Mel realistically, should you be elected in the yeah. autumn, when the election might happen, yeah. How soon, realistically, could men expect yeah. more colleagues? Yeah. Well, look, we know it's going to be 
really difficult because the state of the economy we're in after 14 years, right? So Labour is not promising that just like that overnight, everything, that would be a lie and we can't do that. So but what, what we have said, what the we said is there's going to yeah. be a cash injection into our public services, our schools and our health service funded uh, and... and £3.81 will be injected into mental health. <laughs> Uh, we've we've looked at the VAT on private schools, which is going to fund some of this. Bingo! There's going to be uh, nice. bonuses that are going to be cut on private equity. But you um, must have, and, and you've made those points, but, but just in terms of none windmill, none can none realistically none. expect well, some they can't kind do of improvement in working conditions well, with yeah, all no, colleagues. Yeah, do you have a notion? Are you talking like two years in, three years in, maybe not till the, till the second parliament, should you get elected twice? It what should she expect? Be quicker it needs to be we're quick. Not seeing, we're not seeing what people are leaving and we're not getting new people. Yeah, in. no, I agree 100%. Some people, we're going to need to train more people, right? And that takes time too. And are there people that have left that we can persuade to come back? And what do we need to do to persuade them to come back? So we need to move as quickly as we can. There are thousands of kids. But notionally, no idea of when that might be. It will be quickly, but I'm not going to say within no, the no, first I wasn't. six months, within the first year. But we are going to put an injection of cash that the Tories haven't done into our health service and into right. our school. Where's Angela? Where things as well was so tilting as well as they just they they've spent the money yeah. from this private school tax increase like a thousand different times on a thousand different things. I mean, I, I, this the ironic thing is that at least in Corbyn's manifestos, it was all costed. They may have been tax rises, but you knew where the money was coming from. They'd costed how they were going to pay for it through all of these different measures. Yet Labour are coming in now with, or oh, we're going to, you know, we're going to tax private school kids and private equity bosses, which you know, not things I oppose. These are both good things, but they're going to pay for a workforce expansion plan in the NHS and breakfast clubs for schools and supervised toothbrushing and all these mental health professionals that they're going to add and all of the extra police on the streets, all this extra money for councils and for mayoralties, all of these things that they say they're going to pay for. And I'm like, that's not how this works. Serious, but you've had your hand up I'm throughout a, this. I'm a therapist. I work in a school. So I know what I'm talking about. Rod, if you think this is nothing to do with poverty, can I suggest that you live in poverty for six months and I will give you a free psychotherapy session and we'll chat about your mental health. It's absolutely everything. Thank you. I'm so Based. Yeah, again, I'm this sorry, should be true. This should be true. my graph. I've got a graph. What about poverty? Here's the thing. As our country has got more affluent, we... No. Oh, wait, hang on. Wait, 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 hang on. He's going to say here, as our country has become more affluent, our mental health has gotten worse. Just just play on for one second, Kevin. Is that what he's going to say? Let's have a look. We have 40-fold more therapists and psychi psychiatrists than we had in the 50s, and I think it's something like eight times as many and as we had. And the population is much the, larger. The, sorry, just to, uh, let me finish. And eight times as many as we had in the, in the 1990s into 2000. <laughs> You know, many, many more. It's been a huge growth industry. And my argument is simply this, that, yes, I, I, think, I think the complaints about the, the waiting times and, and the, the short staffing are absolutely fine. And, right, we should complain about them. And it's good that Labour might do something about it. But at some point, because this is something which is happening across the Western world, we have to try and look at what the cause is. And right, it's okay, not the so tools. pause then. I mean, they... So he keeps, so he's trying to not even refuting the point here. But let's say, you know, if you if you was to come here, which is what we're kind of he's kind of moving and dancing around the point of is that as we've got more affluent, our mental health has gotten worse. I'm like, yeah. you do you have you been alive for the last fourteen years? You've just been asleep for this entire period. We've had the biggest squeeze in living standards since the Napoleonic Wars, since records began. We've had stagnant wages for 14 years. 330,000 people died because of austerity cuts caused by the Conservative government over that, over that period of 2010 to 2018, when all of the mental health problems have suddenly started happening. There wasn't a mental health epidemic during Tony Blair's year. He may have been a shit prime minister, but at least he funded welfare payments so that child poverty basically didn't exist under the Labour Party. And you're coming here to tell us that, well, actually, no, it's not, it's not a problem with poverty. Fuck off. It's bullshit. 
maybe, maybe all of the Belen's driving Bentleys, all of the wanker bankers in the city of London, who are rich as Croesus, right? Because you've got to remember, not everybody has no money at this point. It's not a cost of living crisis for everybody. Some people in this country are doing very well. In fact, the biggest growth industry in the world is luxury goods, because rich fuckers have got all the money they can spend on diamond encrusted Bentleys in this country. In fact, Bentley themselves are seeing £500 million increase in net profit in this last year as a result of the fact that luxury goods and personalised luxury goods for the super rich are one of the biggest growth industries. Bernard Arnault is the richest man in the world and he runs Louis Vuitton and Moet luxury brand as well. There is yeah. a gigantic market for luxury goods. Affluence in this country is in one fucking place and it's in the hands of the super rich and there's a reason why the rest of this country mental health is going down and it's also at the time we're now poorer than fucking mississippi outside of london this man has never this to all of this words he's like well actually when i'm going into middlesbrough i feel like this this man doesn't give a shit about the people of middlesbrough no. he doesn't give a shit about anybody who lives outside the city of london otherwise he would know that that's true true also i like that pause because it look, makes him look like the little goblin he is <laughs> it does indeed it does indeed don't help obviously but it's not the tories there is something else going on and if you start addressing that then you might begin to see a reduction in the problem itself. Okay, I'm... And what is that problem? You say it's not woke. poverty, then woke, yeah, it makes woke, yeah. Hey there, if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like and leave a comment that helps the video out in the algorithm. If you subscribe and ring the bell, it'll let you know when I go live. I stream every day on YouTube and Twitch. You can also follow all of my socials down in the description. And if you want to support me in a more financial manner, there's a join button for membership to just 99p to be a member on YouTube, as well as a patron. And there's some merch there as well. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.